Hi, this is Sonia with RC Solutions and I'm back with uh, the Journal Signature Pages uh, Series 1, Episode 4. And I'm just going to go around it slowly. And then I'll show you little by little how I made each one. Okay, so to start off, I have this little tut spot, and I also have this, um, this is a pretty little snippet that I got off of Etsy, and I got it from, um, I think it's called Icky Chic Designs, and um, it was a set of three of them, of these little snippets, fabric, and I can use it as a bookmark or something, and I had it tucked inside of this frame that I made and I got the frame it was it's a digital printable and um, it's a PNG file that I got from Etsy and I printed it out I fussy cut it out and then just kind of added some um, alcohol inks around the crevices and then added some glossy accents and if you're ever interested in how I made some of my elements um, just leave a, a comment in the section in the uh, in the description or we'll leave a, a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about it and then this lady let me set this down this rustic the word rustic it's from my rustic beauty kit on um, my blog my multimedia crafts digital blog it's a freebie it along with this uh, cameo and I just fussy cut it out and so this is a pocket and the lady comes from um, it's uh, it's from the elegant it's from ebony vintage journal kit it's from elegant creations or elegant tools on Etsy and I just made this into a journaling spot and I just did some stamping on the back added a stamp of um, lines on there and then I just made a collage of some leftover scrap paper and just did some stamping using some bow bunny stamps and it's double sided and just added some some jute uh, ribbon jute string and some ribbon and this flips down And you have another pocket. And then I just uh, had a little tag that I added some fabric to and an eyelet. And it's double sided. It's just it's another journaling spot. And this also is a journaling spot. And then um, I just made like a little cluster here and just sewed a button on here. That's a journaling spot. And the, so you have a tuck spot here and in here. And then you also have one in here, which I need to take this out. That's another journaling spot. And then you have your tuck spots back in here. And this paper is from the Aged Stamps uh, Facebook blog freebie. Um, along with this um, envelope as well. This, these two come from the Age Stamps blog, Digital Freebie. So without further ado, let me just show you this. So this comes out, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the cameo. This was, um, this is on my pics. This is also part of uh, the Rustic Beauty a digital PNG kit that you can get on my my blog for free and I just fussy cut it out went over it with some alcohol markers and then went over it again with some glossy accents and when that dried I took some gold uh, paint and just kind of went around the edge with it 
And if you're interested in how I made this and made the frame, um, I can make a video for it if you're interested in it. Just let me know. And then I took a Tim Holtz die. It's the, which one is this? Sewing room die. And I don't have a cover to it, but that's what it looks like. That's where it comes from. And then you have your, um, like the button and the, uh, the threaded thing. And the spindle, I mean the thimble and the, um, the threader, needle threader. These are part of my blog freebie sewn up digital kit or graphics kit also on, um, on the blog. And then I did the same thing to these. I just went over and was fussy cut them out. Whatever it was, some alcohol ink, and then um, glossy accents, and let those dry, and they became a pocket. And the button also came from that too. I did the same process to it. So let me move all these out of the way. So I'm going to show you this. I made. This is a little. This is the front, oh, well, this is the front and the back. And basically for the belt, I just took some brown card stock, ran it through an embossing folder, and I used two different embossing folders. For the, um, for the metal part of the belt, I used the 3D Textures Fade, laundry and then for the other part of the belt I use the uh, 3d textures fade mechanics turn it like that so you can see some of the details in it and I just ran it through the my scissors big kick machine and uh, just added some um, distress inks some black distress inks and then I also added some Ranger alcohol inks in there with it then went over it with some glossy accents and some stickles and then some of that gold paint and it's also sealed with some uh, Liquitex gel medium and uh, this little word rustic beauty is just a remnant that I cut out from the word uh, Rest in beauty. I just didn't want to waste any of the text. And so this has a paper clip that I made. And it's made from a piece of leftover painted paper. And I just added some string and a little bead. Added an eyelet and um, some little dangles. I kind of messed it up down here and I'm trying to add this little hoop. I'm not a jewelry maker, so, <laughs> but, so this opens up like this. I just took a, a piece of the die and used that as a closure, and it just opens up, and you have um, your goodies and stuff inside, and I just have a, a tag, and I just took, um, I did some stamping on it. Punched a hole in the eyelet and added some jute string and just did some um, edge punching. And then I have this little booklet. This is also from Elegant Creations. These papers, these are from Elegant Creation or Elegant Tools on Etsy. Ooh, look at that. I put that in upside down. But you can still journal on it. <laughs> And then I just added um, an eyelet to it. And then this, uh, this is also part of the H Stamps digital kit. And I just fussy cut it out, added the glossy accents and stuff to it. And I put a pocket here and it's double sided and just added some washi tape. I think that's Tim Holtz washi tape. And then this bingo card. And then this is just some old scrapbook paper. I just did some stamping on it. 
And then here's another beautiful picture from Elegant Tools. And it's also a journaling spot. And then here's an embossed uh, paper that I have that I turned into a journaling spot. And I'm not real sure which embossing folder this one was from. Because I've gotten rid of some of my stuff. Um, but I don't think I've got that one anymore. And then this one, I used the Tim Holtz. This is, yeah, this is the Tim Holtz Textured Fade uh, Bingo and Patchwork Set. And I just ran it through the embossing folder, through the Sizzix die. And um, just added a whole bunch of different, uh, I distressed around the edges, added some black distress oxide ink, brown vintage photo ink, some, um, some Ranger alcohol inks, and then some of that gold texture lux paint. And then here's another card that I made. This swivels out. And it's double sided so you can journal. And here's just some uh, washi tape and then some little tags. So you can journal one. I just did some edge, use the edge punch here and just cut this out and distressed it. And here's another little journaling spot. You just tuck that under there. And so that's basically it. So I want to show you. How I made it. So let's get started. So I want to show you the H stamp set. What you get with it. You get the diagram and instructions. You also get, um, you get an ephemera sheet that just has different things on them. You get a um, envelope and you get three different um, back pages that you can use so you can print double sided if you like and this is what they look like so I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my envelope cut out. I'm just going to take my scoring board and you don't have to do this, it's just an option. And I'm going to score along the lines um, going across here on the flaps, the flap areas. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this basically just folds over, just fold on the flaps, And I'm going to create a closure right here. Actually, what I'm going to use this for is for a page inside of my journal. And I've already used the ephemera. I've already used some of the ephemera on another page, so um, I think I'm going to create a makeshift belt to come around this here. 
So, let's see. The folder measures approximately seven and a quarter inches. So I need to double that to 14 and a half, we'll just say 15 inches. So I'm gonna have to cut it in two different places. I'm going to make a, a piece of paper eight and a quarter inches long. And I'm just going to do about one and a half inches wide. And then I'll do, I'll do eight inches because I've got to cover it. I have to have room to go around this entire thing. So I should have added like a half an inch on each side. So, and this is going to be about one and a half inches. So I currently have some cardstock that's, let's see, eight inches by one and a half inches. And then I also have one that measures eight and a quarter inches by one and a half inches and I'm going to have to connect the two so I'm going to score it at a half an inch at a, yeah, at a half an inch and the only reason why I put that score mark there is just so I know where to attach it at. And then I'm just going to add some um, glue, some art glitter glue. And I'm just going to attach these two together right at the score line. Just going to make sure that it's going to fit going across because this is going to be a belt and then I'm going to have to make a buckle so I'm going to I need a square and I'm going to make it out of black <clears throat> but or one and three quarters by two Then I'm going to measure a quarter of an inch from the edge. that I have it in the right spot.
So I'm just going to cut it out. I'm just going to take like an eighth of an inch off of this side right here. Or a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. And this will become the buckle. And I'm just going to double this up. I'm going to trace around it. And um, cut out another copy of it. Okay, so I'm just going to take these two pieces and I'm going to glue them together. And I'm just going to use some art glitter glue on this. This just makes it a little bit more sturdy. I'll just leave it squared off. I'm just going to run it through my embossing, uh, my scissors die cut embossing machine. And I'm going to use my 3D textures fade. Um, I'm not sure which one this one's called. This one, Fondry. And this one is mechanics. So I'm going to run. <clears throat> I want to make the buckle out of the foundry. Okay, so I have the extended platform. I have my embossing folder. I have my paper. And then I've got the top cutting pad. And I'm just going to run it through. I'm just going to run it back through again. Oh, come on. You don't have to do that, but I am. I'm going to move this out of the way. There we go. So now it's embossed. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the belt. And I'm going to have to do it in two sections because of how long it is. So I'm just going to place it in here. Flip it around. You can see how it's embossed, but then there's a section here. So I'm just going to fold this over. A portion of it's going to get embossed twice, which is okay. So I'll so just get a little extra texture and blend right on in.
and that popping sound is normal. And so now, the entire thing is embossed. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some black ink and um, this is uh, some Distress Oxide and I'm just using the, um, it's an old color box dauber. I'm using it to go across this and I'm just lightly going over it, over the raised areas. And then I'm just going to go over this one with a little bit of white. I have a, a, a pigment post white by Colorbox. It's a brush pad. And I'm just going to just kind of barely go over it so it can raise it up and you can see the embossed areas a little bit better. Now I have some Lux Texture Paint by Faber-Castell and it's gold. I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of dab at it. And first, I'm just going to barely put some spots on here on the belt and just blend it in. I'll set that to the side. Then I'm going to add a little bit to um, to the belt. I think I'm going to take a little bit more white around this. Or actually black, just to kind of darken it a little bit. Go around the edges. And I'm just going to take my Copic markers and use the black. Zoom in. And I'm just going to, um, not Copic, but Firefly alcohol marker. I'm just going to go in and kind of um, put some shadows in there.
squeeze them out just a little bit. So that's your belt buckle. And then I'm just going to kind of highlight some dark areas in the belt, some shadows. under stress the outer edges of, um, of this with brown first and then black using some vintage photo for Ranger go over this with some Liquitex um, Super Gloss Heavy Gel. This just makes it strong. I'm going to go over the buckle and the belt with it. I'm just going to use my finger and go over the whole thing. This not only seals in the colors but it makes it stronger and more durable. I'm going to go over both sides with it, with just a little bit, you don't need a lot, just, just a dab. I'm just going to let that dry. Okay, so now I need to put like a, something in the middle of here where the belt can cross over. So I'm just going to use, um, I guess I'll just use another piece of black cardstock. And I'll cut it at an eighth of an inch. I'll cut two one eighth inch pieces. Then I'm going to glue it to the back of the belt buckle. And I'm going to glue it, I'm going to glue it vertically instead of horizontal, horizontally. And so any excess of overhang um, you can cut, but I don't really have too much from this side. You can't really see it, so I'm just going to leave it alone. 
And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wipe this off. Try to keep my stuff straight so I don't have a big mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. So I'm just going to glue on the edges of this paper to the top on both sides. And then I'll just go ahead and keep them together, smear them together. And just kind of hold it for a moment until it completely dries. And then this belt is going to go around it. So what I need to do is slide it down just a little bit. I need to find the center spot, like where they meet in the center. But before I glue it down, I want to make sure that the buckle is going to fit in correctly. I do see like a slight little bit of an overhang, so I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm going to feed this through here, just like we do all our buckles. it back down through here and then I'm just going to try to center it without tearing it oops that came loose so I have to that back on there. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back.
have that on there so far. And I'm just going to go around the belt buckle with some glossy uh, accents or some stickles or something just to kind of make it look more silver and bring it out. And I'm just going to add some, uh, some diamond stickles and some gold stickles. In just random places. And I'm just going to add a dab of this alcohol ink. This is uh, mermaid blue. I'm just going to add a dab. Oops. I don't really want it there, but that's okay too. Just going to let it fall down. And I'll just let it dry and I'll do a little more, um, I think I might add some to the belt too, in just little, little small places, different little areas. We'll just let that dry. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this is dry now. So I'm just going to come back in through and uh, just add a little bit more of this white to it. I'm just going to dab it. Just kind of highlight. Oops. Just smear that in a little bit. I'm just going to take a little bit of glossy accents to raise it. And I'll just let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm just going to take um, the double sided paper and I'm going to cut around the edges and I'm just going to take my um, Pouring board. And I want to score it at two and a half, five, seven and a half. This no. Uh, 
then at eight. Yeah, two and a half, five and an eight. Then I'm gonna flip it over again and I wanna score it at uh, four and a quarter. No, oh, four. You would add a quarter of an inch if you let it, if you printed it out, it won't bleed. But since I didn't, and I took a quarter of an inch off the margin, that's what made it smaller. So instead of it being eight and a half by 11, it's like eight by 10 and a half. So that's how I got my measurements. I'm gonna fold it. And these are gonna become pockets. And I'm gonna glue it on the sides. So you'll have a pocket in here, and then you'll have these side pockets. But first I'm going to distress it. I want to distress over all the creases and around the edges. And then I'm gonna do do both sides the same way. First cover it with brown, then cover it with black. Okay, so I've distressed it on both sides. So depending on which side you want for your main outside cover will determine um, how you fold it so if this is the side that you want to show the most you're going to fold it over to the middle like inner like that then you're going to flip this up and this will be the side that shows but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this over until the edge or until this Corner touches the edge and just fold it down. And I'm just going to glue that. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to fold it over until the corner reaches the edge. And then hold this 
with this hand and then smooth it down, smooth it down. I want to try to line it up, so let me. I'm gonna try to line it up so it make it come over like this at that point. Until it comes to the edge. And then smooth it down. a little better. Now I'm just going to glue it down. And I'm going to do both sides the same way. Before I glue it down, I'm going to find out which page I want to put it on. I might add something on the bottom so that I can glue it to the center. Because what I'll probably do is I'll have this come here and this come here, or this could flip out. But first, I'm going to go ahead and glue this. Only on the sides. So now you have a pocket here, pocket here, 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 and here. I'm gonna make sure it's dry though first. Then I'm gonna take a strip of black paper, two inches. And then you're just going to score it at every half inch. So half inch, one inch, and one half inch. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to line up. Let me get some red score tape.
So basically you're going to line this up at the score mark and glue it on there. I'm going to go ahead and put some red score tape on all four of those. And I'm just going to peel it off. I'm going to line this up to the first score mark. Then I'm going to fold it over. Well, first, before I do that, I'm going to I'm going to fold it at the half inch mark or the one inch mark. I'm just going to go ahead and take all of these off. And then you'll still have that score mark. I'm just going to fold it. And this will become your hinge. This is what you're going to glue to the book. Now there's a little excess right here and I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to add this to the page. I think do I want it to come up or do I want it to go down? And I'm going to add this to the middle of the page. So I'm going to add some red score tape right here. Yeah, yeah, I'll have it at the top of the page, or almost the top of the page. So this flips down. <laughs> okay, so now I need to do something with this page because it's kind of plain. And I want to decorate this here and make it look as though it's a shirt. So, hmm. I think it needs something in the middle, right here, like a, um, I found some of these little cobblecons that I ordered from, I think, either eBay or Etsy, I forgot it. I've had it for a little while. I think I'll use this blue one here. I'm just going to glue it right here in the middle. 
I'm going to put like a small little piece of paper to connect these two together so that the bride doesn't fall. I'm just going to take my black um, number 120 Firefly alcohol marker and I'm just going to go around this edge. Okay, so I went around these edges with the alcohol ink on both sides, but I only put um, like a little gem here. I didn't put one back here. I, I didn't think I needed it. And I found some um, some ephemera. So I think I'm just going to add, let's see, I might put this here. this here this here yeah I'm just gonna add some um, some glue around the edge this down at the bottom and I'm going to use it as a tuck spot. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to glue the upper part of this and it's going to become a tuck spot as well. this entire thing down this dress form some little odds and ends that I guess I could put together. And I'm just going to make this into a tuck spot. And I'm going to, I'm going to glue these two together.
this is just to make it thicker. Then I'm going to glue this over top of here at an angle, just the bottom portions of it. make it into a tuck spot as well. Let me just take some of this glue off of here. I don't know how well that'll work, but I'm just going to try and see. So I found a piece of black paper that's pretty much wide enough, so I just need to fold it to where it's tall enough. I'm just going to cut it on the crease. I'm just going to glue this on. I think I'll use some double sided tape. I'm going to add a little wet glue that way it'll give me room to move this around and get it centered where I want it at. And then I'm just going to take a piece that's, um, I'm just going to take a, a piece that's one inch down and score it. And I'm going to connect it to that other side. So I'm just going to cut this at one inch. some score tape to it on both sides.
And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, connect these two together. That way it's not so much space. It doesn't warp the paper right here. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue where this is coming up at. And then I'm just going to take close that up first. And then I'm just going to take the strip First, I'm going to line it up on the black paper where I want it. Then I'm just going to take this paper off. Just going to glue it to here and that just kind of reinforces it and you notice the page doesn't bow as much looks like I'm gonna need to do the same thing here or at least to a portion of it. So, I'll add some double-sided tape here. I found a piece of green that works pretty well. I'll just put it over top. Let's put the word courage on there. Okay, so I put the green on there and then I added the word courage. I need something here. This will work. I'll just put like a piece of blue paper in the backdrop just to kind of highlight it. This is light enough. I just want to go around the edges with some black ink.
just gonna put that there and then the button I'll use this as like a closure. I'm just gonna glue this on here. I'm just going to glue this down. This would be too much, or if it would actually work. I think it would actually work right here. these into here. I'm still going to put this on here. Like that. Then I'll just add some of these papers into the envelope. So there we have it. 
I've completed my page or pages. I'm satisfied with it. So this flips down and you have your ephemera and tags and stuff that come out. This is secure. This is secure. This flips out. This is a tuck spot. And of course this comes out. And you've got all this and all your ephemera that's inside. And then here's the front and the back. hope you enjoyed the video and if this was helpful um, please like share comment subscribe and if you're interested in learning how I made some of the ephemera in here just shoot me a comment in the description and um, I'll try to make a video for it so thanks for watching